Hey, good morning, guys, and welcome to this week's episode of Bench Warmers Tuesday. Been doing Tuesday the last couple of weeks, been meaning to switch it back to a Monday, but unfortunately, I had to go to Great Mall yesterday morning, so delayed things a little bit. Uh, looks like my camera and my audio are off a little bit. Hold on one second. Fix this. Nope, still, still off, so I apologize. If the audio and the video are not syncing up correctly, but don't worry, when I show the photos, it's not really going to matter as long as you can hear my voice, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, if you're not able to catch us live, you can always catch us on YouTube at Hat Hyphen Club. Be sure to subscribe to us, which is a fancy word for follow, and uh, give us a like if you like what you see. Jam1620, always a pleasure to see you. Uh, Lebo100, what's going on, dude? I feel like we haven't chatted in a while, but I always see you in the comments. But anyway, um, short sports week last week so might make for like a little bit of a shorter show this week uh just because of the fact that we had the major league baseball all-star break which tends to be the only time period throughout the year where we don't have sports but things have obviously evolved a little bit so we've got the WNBA all-star game there was some team usa action going on nba summer league going on etc uh elite fitteds what's up dude uh pumcv what is also going on I'm sure there's going to be some other people joining us here momentarily as well. Some of the regulars love to see you guys. Um, and then of course the Olympics are going to be kinking off. Not too, too long from now. I think it's what uh, end of this week, if not early next week. He, yay. What up? And best of AZ. What it do. So anyway, um, there's a lot upcoming. We'll, we'll just put it that way. So, Unfortunately, with the end of Euro Cup and uh, Copa America this last week uh, or the previous week, things things have slowed down a little bit. But anyway, uh, jersey pickups over the last week got some bangers in, some like super rare things. I'm going to start off with this one just because it's still kind of surreal that I have this in my hands. And yeah, it's in worse condition than I was kind of expecting. But at the same time, to actually get it in hand is a much bigger deal than not having it in hand. So first up, San Antonio Spurs, number three. This, of course, is former NBA sharpshooter Dale Ellis. Like I said, it's a little bit more faded than I was kind of hoping, but at least it still reads a bit. Um, and at least it's one that I can finally cross off my list because this is the only one that I've ever actually seen in my size. A uh, buddy of mine back in New York was selling it, and I scooped it up immediately. So thank you, Benjamin. And when I say thank you, Benjamin, I'm not referring to myself. The, the dude who I bought it from is also named Benjamin. So anyway, uh, this one actually came at a much cheaper price than I was expecting. And this is one of the last Boston Celtics jerseys that I've been trying to find. Uh, really good condition on this one. So um, I already have the Kevin McHale NBA 850 but I didn't have his just straight up normal Jersey that they put together. So got this one in hand now. Um, excellent. In other words, it's basically another, uh, it's another good St. Patrick's day Jersey I could wear. Um, have I ever gotten a Jersey restored? Yes, I have actually uh, several. So my buddy Marlon up in Seattle, who does like all my customizations and stuff. Uh, there's been a couple that I've sent to him that he's just basically redone all the graphics and stuff like that. So that's probably going to be one, the uh, the Dale Ellis that I'm going to send up his way just so we can uh, kind of do a little bit more work on the back and, you know, hopefully everything holds and sticks and stuff like that. Because usually it involves him like wiping like the entire thing clean and then adding the printing on. Uh, but in this case, I'll be honest. I don't mind it as much because, like I said, you can still see it. You can still read it. Um, it's fine. Um, I'll figure it out. I'm, a, I'm an adult. You know, I can I can deal with these things a little bit. But uh, the biggest thing to, to, to come home uh, over the last week. So if you guys have been following my Instagram story, there was something I scooped up in Vegas. Uh, not this last weekend, but, you know, the week before that. And it's something that had been in my mind for like ugh, damn near a year, actually. And the store still had it. So thank God for that. Um, but yeah, when my wife and I went to Vegas uh, a little over a week ago, I went and bought it. 
but I couldn't get it back home, or at least I didn't think I could because I didn't have like a backpack or anything to put it in. Went back to Vegas this last weekend, uh, brought a backpack. This thing did not fit inside, so it's like, screw it. I'm just going to take it through security in the, the bag they gave me. But um, here it is, man. Money well spent. Uh, this is a old school, I want to say probably from the 1970s, Mickey's Fine Malt Liquor uh, light up sign. So I've got a little, uh, my little barcade area just uh, adjacent to my kitchen uh, that I will have to figure out where the hell to put this. And hopefully the, the plug reaches down into the socket there so we can actually light it up. But uh, $269 it cost me, <laughs> which was fine, which was fine. Um, I actually did pretty well gambling when I, when I purchased it. So all worthwhile. But anyway um yeah okay i'll uh when, when i get all plugged in lit up and everything like that in the house I'll, I'll definitely you know post some photos and stuff like that so but definitely one of the better slash dumber purchases i've made in in quite a long time so um and especially as a, as a huge connoisseur of mickey's fine malt liquor that i am I felt like yeah i kind of need this so anyway uh on to what we got to talk about so I think my internet's about to cut out here in a sec. Oh, went back to green, so we might be good. Uh, Major League Baseball All-Star Game took took place this last week, and uh, we never talked about the uniforms. Uh, to which case, they're not the worst. Uh, there have been some pretty bad ones over the last few years. These ones, to some extent, are kind of decent. Like the hats were were done. Yeah, they're okay. Um, just a rehash of the uh, Cincinnati Reds All Star Game from what was that, 2015, uh, where they did the you know the old school you know kind of pinstripes on the front or the bars going across the front. So it was a rehash to that, just adding the star because it was in Texas. Um, he a with the hot take just saying holy shit these look hideous i'm not gonna say they look hideous i mean like but like i said they're not the worst ones that we've ever seen uh but they're also not the best so it's it's a bit of a struggle with me on these ones and just because as a lot of us have you know became accustomed to over the year where it was just so much better when teams wore their actual uniforms on the field and for whatever reason, that was just so, so much of a cooler effect as opposed to everyone wearing the same uniform. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to sound old when I say this, but, but unfortunately, it is kind of one of those things. But there is something to be said about simplicity. And everybody wear their regular uniform. Sorry, I cut out there for a second. Maybe have a new hat or something like that. Historically, like they they had a spin for the for the home run derby, which was fine, but for the game, yeah, it was always just the team uniform, some cool hat, whatever. And so, a hat with a patch on the side. Um, but yeah, now we have this, and I don't know. I I feel like we're 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 <laughs> we're. we're not to say we're becoming worse as a society or anything like that. No, it's not that. It's not that dramatic. But there is just something to say about simplicity. So anyway, uh, you're gonna go. You're gonna go to the next one. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the game itself was pretty decent. A uh, lot of solid pitching. Oh, now it wants to. Now it wants to keep moving. A uh, lot of solid pitching throughout the the first couple innings. Uh, until this game was broken open by Shohei Itani, three-run home run. No real surprise that he was going to hit a dinger. Uh, but then, of course, in the same inning right after that, Juan Soto uh, matched him up with his additional three-run home run. So, once again, back to a tight game. Uh, but it wasn't until, what, the uh, the fifth inning, uh, Jared Duran of the uh, Boston Red Sox hit himself a two-run home run and uh, therefore took home MVP honors because – you know, for whatever reason, when they're voting for MVP, it always comes down to, well, who got the winning hit and whatever, which I feel like is a very 
strange way to do things uh as far as like you know actually have an official mvp for a game i don't know i mean it makes sense in the sense where it's like okay yeah the dude did win the game for the team but let's be real the fact that <clears throat> the american league and national league pitching was both was solid on on either end um i don't know just it's whatever um i only caught only caught bits and pieces of it i really was not fully invested after everything that's been going on with the Oakland A since last season, I have just completely taken myself mentally out of baseball, which is kind of a big thing for me to say, especially since a lot of you know, like my body is completely tattooed uh, in baseball logos and paraphernalia and such like that. And so I've just become, you know, not <sighs> withdrawn is probably the right word for it uh, with anything having to do with baseball. And so it's just like, you know what? I growing up watched the all-star game every single year looked more forward to it than the world series and now i'm just in a state of just like malaise so yeah hiatus is a good word for that i i agree with that ea i don't know man just it, it's kind of whatever but yep the game was played teams won jared duran mvp blah 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 uh five to three of course was the final score um and yeah all all runs scored in the third and the fifth inning of this game so uh to just say well this one dude because he had some run two run home run to win the game is the mvp it's just like come on let's are we really ignoring the fact that it was just like shut down innings like throughout this entire game by both pitching staffs like that hurts it hurts anyway uh here's a look at the standings as far as uh post weekend plus post all-star break uh, Orioles still on top uh, with a one and a half game lead over the Yankees, followed by the Red Sox, Rays, and Blue Jays. Um, real shocking season from the Blue Jays. Like, there's no reason for them for them to be this bad. Uh, over in the Central, Guardians still on top by four games over the Twins. Royals coming in hot with an eight and two uh, over their last ten, but also the Tigers with seven and three over their last ten. Uh, still six games behind the Royals and the Twins for that one, but looking like we're at the precipice of at least the Royals potentially jumping the Twins for a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, the White Sox just hanging out in the basement. Uh, Astros and Mariners made this last week rather interesting just because of the fact that the Mariners have obviously blown their 10 And then the Astros yesterday, which was pretty dope. Uh, that series still continues between them. A's, of course, still in the bottom. Uh, A's have been on a weird mix of wins over, like, the last couple weeks. Uh, not in the same sense of when they got really hot, you know, at the start of the season, but they're still just kind of hanging in there. Um, so even though they're 40 and 62, they are still, you know, throwing those upsets here and there. Uh, Rangers hanging out in the middle, four games behind. Angels, nine games behind, of course. Uh, over the National League, Philly still dominating the, the NL East. Braves, eight and a half back, followed by the Mets, Nationals, and Marlins. Uh, over in the Centrals, Brewers still on top by five games. Uh, the Pirates, Cubs, and Reds keep th shaking things up a little bit. Cardinals have been hanging out in second place for like the last couple weeks now. Uh, but I still expect things to kind of change there. Um, as long as the Brewers stay on top, I know Southside Steven Seawright and I will both be happy about that one. And over in the West, Dodgers on top. Padre and backs flip spots since last show. Giants and Rockies still running at the bottom two there. But yeah, Dodgers, eight and a half game lead still over the Padres at the moment. So maybe things will change or they'll stay exactly the way they are. Probably stay exactly the way they are. But anyway, uh, NBA Summer League, your champion. Are the Miami six and zero oh, and taking down the Memphis Grizzlies in the championship game uh, just the other day? So if you guys didn't know, I've been uh, going to NBA Summer League. Uh, uh, this was my third year going. I tend not to go during the first weekend because it's an absolute shit show. Um, but with everything that was going on with Team USA, there weren't as many stars there as there typically are during the first weekend. So. You know, you could say it was a little bit more chill, but yeah, definitely going the second weekend. It's more relaxing. I just want to go there, throw some bets down, 
watch the, the the new kids on the on the up and coming and stuff like that it's usually pretty fun um so i was there thursday and friday i came home saturday night so i could have gone to the games on saturday but i just wasn't feeling it um because i mean realistically being in a at thomas and mac center for so the first game started at 1 30 p.m and the last game starts at eight and so you're basically there for like 10 plus hours just watching basketball and back-to-back days it's pretty intense um and it it's kind of boring at the same time like I, by that i mean you're in las vegas you should be doing some more gambling that's all i meant by that like going and watching basketball is pretty damn fun um and especially if you have bets on on these games which i did then it can be really exciting but to be dead honest that first game uh session that we went to so on thursday there was only like realistically one maybe two competitive games that entire day uh, first one, of course, was Cleveland and the Lakers. The other one was Orlando and Brooklyn. Both of those came down to the wire, uh, to which case I will say Jalen Tyson from Cal, uh, who got drafted by the Cavaliers. I saw him play in summer league, uh, in the, uh, or not summer league in the, um, the PAC 12 tournament. That kid's really fucking good at basketball and really looking forward to see how he's going to perform during the regular season for the Cavaliers because he almost had a triple-double in the game against the Lakers. Uh, Unfortunately, the Cavs could not pull it out despite the fact that they had a lead late down the stretch. But anyway, um, like I said, Miami Heat won the championship. uh, 120 to 118, so the game did go to overtime. And overtime rules, I kind of like a little bit more than regular season rules because of the fact that it's essentially... The first to seven points is the winner. So they have a mark of you have to score at least 120. So at overtime or when they went in overtime, end of regulation, they both had 113 points. So it's like, okay, first to 120. But if you hit it with a three, then obviously it's going to take it to 121 or 120. Score or anything like that. So sorry, cut out there for a sec. Um, But anyway, 120 to 118 was the final score. Uh, Memphis got some decent players in uh, Gigi Jackson Jr., La Rivia, and Scottie Pippen Jr. Uh, All three of them scored at least 28 points in this game. Uh, But on the other end with the Miami Heat, uh, Larson from the University of Arizona, uh, Jay Christopher, uh, Swider, who came off the bench and scored 19 points for them, uh, Kevin Ware, and uh yeah this was your game winner by by larson so solid defense by scotty pippen jr it just happened to get up and over and in and uh like i said 120 to 118 was your final score obviously i did not go to the championship game Uh, i think it was played on monday so yesterday and uh i was already back home so anyway one of these days i'll go to the championship game uh team usa versus south sudan was hands down the best basketball game that ha- that occurred this last week, maybe with the exception of the WNBA All Star Game, uh, but I got a couple notes I got out of I got to take out of this one because this was a really fun game to watch, and if you guys watched it as well, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did because there is nothing I like more than a team of underdogs that is so written off to the extent of. Team USA was a 43 and a half point favorite for this game. And I forgot to put a bet in is, is probably a more accurate way of saying it, but more in the sense where it's like it was a exhibition game. So I didn't think you could bet on it, or at least I didn't look ahead to see, because I was more focused on major league baseball and NBA uh, summer league action that I was for team USA. And uh, I regret not putting money down just because the fact that 43 and a half point dog. Oh, I definitely would have put money on this just because the fact that it's like. I knew South Sudan had way more talent than Vegas gave them credit for. Uh, And to be honest with you, a lot of the credit goes to two different people. Luol Deng, who, you know, amazing NBA career, amazingly long NBA career is what I wanted to say. Played college ball, college ball at Duke under Mike Krzyzewski. 
um, had a pretty decently long NBA career. Let's be real. Uh, and then, of course, the other person who gets the most credit is going to be this guy, Royal Ivy, uh, assistant coach for the Houston Rockets. He's been an assistant coach for a bunch of teams since 2014, played a 10 year NBA career. Uh, but he's been coaching South Sudan since 2021 and really helping develop that team uh, much the same way that Luol Deng has. But um, the players, obviously, uh, these these fine young gentlemen. Uh, God, they were a fucking fun team to watch. Um, really, actually looking forward to seeing how they perform in the Olympics. Uh, just because of the fact that all the hype every single year always goes toward Team USA, Team USA, Team USA. Just because there are so many NBA players on that squad. And now you have a bunch of young and up-and-comers, half of which are going to college here in, this, in the next year or two. Um and there's a couple NBA talent that are kind of mixed in here. Uh, but to take a lead multiple times on Team USA, not to mention having the lead at the end of the game, only to get thwarted by, you know, his greatness, uh, LeBron James, in the closing seconds. And, I mean, granted, South Sudan had eight seconds to put the ball back in the cylinder uh, for a potential game winner, but unfortunately just couldn't get it in. Uh, so yeah, 101 to 100 was the final score in favor of Team USA. And, you know, for, for all the weird things that LeBron James says in post or pregame interviews and such, I feel like actually the, the one thing that he was genuinely serious about after, after this game was his comments in regard to he likes these games better just because it's better than blowouts, which I totally agree with. Uh, going back to 1992 with the original Dream Team, I mean, I watched all those games as a kid, but in all honesty, when the Dream Team was just blowing dudes out of the water between 40 and 60 points, it's it's not very entertaining basketball. Yeah, you're seeing all these stars plus potential stars of the future on all these different squads, you know, coming together and playing some playing some shooty hoops, as as Austin would say. But at the same time, it's just like when you blow a team out by 40 plus, it's boring as hell. And so to get a nail biter down to the wire game like this, and especially. Not know anything about exactly why I enjoy watching basketball. But then more importantly, this is also why I like like going to NBA Summer League, just because of the fact that it's just like, yep, here's all these kids that I saw in college, maybe occasionally in high school. They're getting their shot. They're trying to make some squads, maybe some G League teams, whatever, and, um, and putting on a good show. But I will say, for those Thursday sessions that I was talking about that I went to, a lot of blowouts. for team usa and south sudan for putting shout out to you guys uh oh where are we going next uh and then of course this coaching staff by team usa i don't know um i don't know to give it should have given the job to i mean yeah they're on the assistant coaching staff but at the same time it's just like there is nothing inspiring that Steve Kerr is necessarily doing as a head coach for this Team USA team. So fix it. Better fix it. Uh, moving on to there was some soccer played over the weekend, Major League Soccer more specifically. Um, Inter Miami still, you know, on top of the Eastern Conference, followed by Cincinnati Columbus, both the New York squad, Charlotte, Orlando City, and Toronto. Um, really funny that the bottom the bottom so from 10 down is a list of teams that have either won mls championships or at least played recently in mls championships you can even throw atlanta united in the ninth spot on that one so major difference that uh mls has taken over like the last like five years it's crazy uh on the inverse of that western conference both la squads galaxy followed by lfc hitting the top which pushes Real Salt Lake out into the third spot, which is kind of strange considering the fact that they've been the top like for the majority of the season. Uh, but the L.A. teams, of course, always seem to show up at the right possible time. 
Uh, Seattle cracking into the top eight. Portland falling down to eight despite the high point of uh, the fifth seed not too long ago. And, uh, oh, look who's on the bottom. San Jose Earthquakes were owned by none other than John Fisher. Sell the fucking team, dude. Same with the Oakland. for sport kicks an edc what is going on and he a saying steve kerr just the face because of nostalgia i agree with that um there's no reason for it to be to be coaching the squad it was better with coach k obviously he was he's retired but there are just some dudes who are better coaches with like a lot of talent like that and uh i think realistically for team usa they should have gone with like a top tier college coach Always seem to do better. Always seem to do better. So here's a look at my terrible bets that I made uh, <laughs> over the last couple of days. Sorry, my nose is itchy. Uh, this was my Friday slot for my four four leg parlay because this is the way I always do it. Always got to go with the dogs, and occasionally I'll throw my team in the mix there because the fact that I'm a very low risk, high reward kind of guy when I put my parlays together. Um, the crazy thing is. I don't know if you guys saw any of the summer league action, but this Atlanta Hawks Chicago Bulls game was phenomenal, but terrible in the sense that the Hawks ended up losing uh, just because at one point they were down by 15 points. Then they took the lead with like less than a minute to go in the, in regulation. Then there were some bullshit calls by the referees, uh, which allowed Chicago to tie it up that forced overtime. And the Bulls won in overtime, so I got killed on that one. Despite the fact that the New York Knicks, the New York Knicks had actually won their part of the leg before the Hawks game finished, and then uh, Oklahoma City got absolutely destroyed by Golden State, uh, as did the Portland Trail Blazers against uh, Charlotte. So it's a very unfun day to watch basketball. Uh, this next one is probably the most depressing of any of the bets that I put down. Well, with the exception of the very last one, I'm going to show you. So, like I said, this was from uh, Friday, so July 19th. And the reason why this is significant is because of the fact that I put this bet in when the Pirates were down 3 nothing. Because, um, yeah, the Phillies just went on a tear in the first inning. But then after I put the bet in, the Pirates came back and tied it up in the first inning. So it's like, all right, even match. We're knotted again. We're, we're good to go baseball's back uh but the, here's the shitty part about this bet so rays pirates tigers all underdogs money line for friday all three of these lost now the reason why i bring this up is because the very next three to four games saturday they played each other again and uh, I shit you not, the Pirates won, the Tigers won, and the Rays won. It did not, and I did not place the same bet again because I already know having them losing on Friday actually would have improved the payout if I took the exact same bet again. It probably would have been like, you know, payout would have been over like 70 bucks or whatever. But Fence, the biggest issue that I have worldwide news uh, soft shutdown that occurred for all the all the uh, hold on a sec dude I don't know why this is the, the ah, just video and audio and just everything is just messed up right now but anyway let me try this because it's bothering me it is really bothering me Hey, camera, let's work now. Dude, yeah, I apparently. Are we back? Nope, still off. Still fucked. Anyway, um, so the bigger thing with the Microsoft shutdown that obviously occurred, you know, early Friday morning throughout the entirety of the day, um, I was not able to place bets on my BetMGM app. So that's why I have the paper tickets. Let me bring this back up on screen. 
That's why the paper tickets, because I had to do everything in person. And typically all the bets that I usually do are through MGM. But the only reason why I went to, let's see, what did I go? William and Hill. So this was at the Palms, uh, just because of the fact that uh, I was with my buddy. We were, by, we were by his house, and he lives right by Rio and Palms. And we had to get the bets in before we headed over to Friday's uh, slate of uh, NBA Summer League action. So that had everything to do with that. So I forgot to check the next day if, the, if you know, MGM app was working uh before you know baseball game started and it finally did because there was one bet that i put in that i'm gonna show you guys here in a second um which is actually nope not this one this was another stupid bet just because end of the day i was trying to i was trying to make money and i failed miserably so only out five bucks but anyway it was this fucking bet so this was the this was saturday's action and this is the parlay that i put together and I put together a five five leg, unlike the majority of the ones I usually do are four legs. So uh, what was it? The Pacers pissed me off when I saw them. They were so bad that I actually bet against them, obviously, because, and like I said, Jalen Tyson, really good player out of Cal, really showed me something. And so I felt like, yeah, the Cavs were going to dominate that game. They did. Uh, that was the first leg hit. Uh, based on what I saw between the Knicks and the Hawks that played on Friday, they didn't play each other, but they both played at the same time. I was more impressed by what the Knicks did, and I believe they won by 10. So pick them. Uh, Bronny and the Lakers uh, put together a good show down the stretch against Cavaliers. So that's why I took them over the Bulls. Uh, Nuggets blew the Pacers out of the water on Thursday, so I definitely took them. And, I mean, there was a stretch where the – the Nuggets looked really terrible, like in in the fourth quarter, like they went five and a half minutes without hitting a field goal, and I was starting to stress over this one. But that was it. This was the last piece that I needed before the final game. I hit that one, and then we have the Mavericks in Oklahoma City th Thunder. That was the last game of the night, and based on the Thunder, the previous night getting blown out of the water by the Golden State Warriors and the Dallas Mavericks beating the Boston Celtics. I felt, yeah, this should be an easy leg to hit right down at the end just because of the fact that what I just said, Mavericks over Boston, Oklahoma City getting blown out by like 30 against Golden State, easy. Uh, so I took this screenshot just because of the fact that at one point the Mavericks did have a 10-point lead in this game, um, and I could have done the cash out option here at $81 or $81.96, despite only investing $5 into it. Uh, if you guys don't know the end result of this game, uh, the Mavericks lost by about 15 points. And I, and, 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 and so the bigger part of this is my flight was supposed to leave Vegas at like 9.45 p.m. Saturday. Um, and I'd get home around like 11, 15, whatever. I didn't get home from Vegas until one o'clock in the morning Sunday. And just because there were delays and delays and delays. And so I got to actually sit down and watch the rest of this game at the airport. And yeah, to say I was pissed, he's kind of underselling it just because of the fact that it's just like multiple times, like one, I should not have made a, I should not have made it a five leg parlay. I, I was, I, the only reason I went to five is because the payout for the first four legs was going to be like $70. And I got greedy. I'm not going to lie about that. So I feel like, yeah, as I said, the Mavericks beat the, pit, the, the Celtics previous day. Thunder lost. It seemed like a slam dunk of a fifth leg. And just to, you know, double my money, essentially. Or double what my win would have been if I would have stuck with the four leg. And, uh, yeah, that, that didn't happen. And uh, God damn it. God damn you, Dallas Mavericks. God damn you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this was the other crazy bet that I put together. Uh, this, of course, I, I placed the bet after the first day of action in the British Open. Um, Daniel Brand was leading, and, and I figured, why the hell not? The crazier part was if I had placed the bet before the Open started on Daniel Brown, uh, he was actually going like 2,500 to one. 
So the payout on that one would have been absolutely extraordinary if he had done it and if I'd put my bet in at that point. But at that moment, I didn't know who the hell Daniel Brown is, and there was no reason for me to throw money on him to begin with. So $5, which would have paid out 100 It would have been nice. But anyway, uh, th this was the good stuff that happened in uh, happened in Vegas. So this is El Cortez, hands down one of my play favorite places to gamble. Uh, probably the only place in Vegas where I actually like to play roulette. And a lot of it has to do with this back line here of numbers where there's a little uh, an additional wheel, basically, where it's like if the ball hits in there and you put a bet on that, you can either win 100 to 1 or 300 to 1 of whatever money you put down, which I usually throw a dollar on it because 31 is my number. So I usually throw a dollar on that in the hopes that it hits. And I've hit it a number of times. Like I've never hit the 300 to 1, but I've hit the 100 to 1 a few times. And um, the reason why I'm showing this photo, a uh, dude, I know, man, I don't know what, I don't, like there's, Nobody else using the internet right now. So there's no reason for my internet to be this shitty. Like, it makes no sense. Um. Anyway. So in the case of this one, the reason why I'm showing this photo off is because I was the orange chips. So there you can see I did hit on the 13, which is usually one of the numbers I play. Uh, but most importantly, I my wife did not come with me on this trip. Uh, number 13 is her lucky number and she usually does play the, the bonus spot. So of course, 13 hit on the bonus spot for that one. Uh, to which case that's why I took a photo and had to let her know because it's like, yep, it would have been a hundred to one plus the, all the money she puts on the chips for that one, which she actually puts like a significant amount of money on. So anyway, I bring that up because so right here. On the board, because they always show the numbers that have that have played previous or hit previously, whatever. I got in right here at the number eleven. So the video. The one here with the green check mark. I've I've talked about this before in regards to the numbers that I play because I'll put you know two singles and a in a in a side. On number 31 which obviously 31 hit a couple spins later so i made like a decent chunk off of that but my other hard numbers i play 8 13 10 22 uh the numbers i split tend to be uh 16 19 17 20 24 Five six nine two five uh, zero double zero, and occasionally I'll throw in for like eleven fourteen and twenty six twenty nine. So this is just like hitting like a full range on the board. So I bring it up just because the fact that obviously I hit on the eleven because I split eleven fourteen. I hit on the twenty seven because I split twenty four twenty seven. I play hard thirteen twenty four twenty seven split hard thirty one, which was very good to see. Uh, six nine. Split two five split uh eleven fourteen again seventeen twenty uh hard twenty two another hard thirteen uh seventeen twenty split thirty five that was the first number I hit during this streak where it's like I didn't win anything because I don't play thirty five then I said I hit four seven uh the reason for this green check mark over thirteen again is because the bonus hit the hundred to one bonus hit on the fucking thirteen again. Uh, and then the next spin was 13 again. So, I mean, I'm winning money off of this, but at the same time, I'm also just like realizing like if my wife was here to play, she would have won a shitload more money because she would have been killing on the bonus. Uh, another 11, 14 split. And then I went, yeah, 35, 34, 36, which is kind of a crazy combination of numbers to just randomly hit after like hitting, hitting accurately so many times. So after those three misses, because, yeah, I don't play 34, 35, or 36, I walked away. It's like, all right, I'm good. I was I left the table up, which was nice. Um, I ended up walking back to the table to see what the next number hit after that, because I ended up going to play craps for a little bit. Uh, the next number to hit after the 36, of course, was 13. So 
I should have stayed on the table because I would have won more money. But anyway, uh, that was basically night one. Uh, this was fucking Saturday. Saturday morning. Uh, I've hit very well on this game called Let It Ride. Um, I usually play it at New York, New York, which is where this photo's from. MGM Grand has... On free golden nugget, it's fucked pretty often. And uh yeah, for whatever reason, Friday like Friday night into Saturday, so like a good 24 hour stretch, like I was hitting hands like fucking crazy. It's wild. So in the case of this one, uh the previous hand I had won, so I tipped the dealer five dollars. So the hand she dealt me for this hand was a pair of jacks, and all you need on you know, for the opening bet is at least a pair of 10s or better and you win. So obviously I had an automatic win with a pair of jacks, set my cards down and just collect the money. Well, in the case of this one, in the case of this one, um, the $5, you know, tip that I gave the dealer because I'd been hitting like really hard on the six card bonus. She decided to throw her $5 chip that I gave her on the outside of my six card bonus, you know, smart strategy, make some more money on the money you gave. If not, no, no big loss there. So anyway, so obviously I hit the three hands for the air jacks worked out pretty well. Um, I somehow hit on the, the three card bonus. Oh, I hit on three card bonus. Cause I had a pair of jacks. So five bucks there. Cause I had a $5 bet that goes one to one. But the craziest part was the six card bonus. Uh, first card she pulled over was a six. So it's like, dope. I'm at least getting, th you know, three of a kind on this. Uh, to which case, where's the payout structure? I just got it here. So six card bonus, three of a kind is five to one on a $5 bet. So at least, you know, hey, we're both getting 25 bucks on this. But obviously the last two cards, uh, not what I meant to do. Hold on one sec. Last two cards that came out were queen, queen. So bam, nailed a full house. And what's the odd payout on that one? 20 to one. So she and I both collected an extra hundred bucks on that. So awesome. Fucking love that shit. Uh, Lebo 100. I did. I did, in fact, smoke that cigar you gave me. And it was pretty decent. Um, I enjoyed it with a nice whiskey. So I sincerely appreciate that, my guy. Thank you very much for that. Um, so that was a good day. And uh, and then after I played Let It Ride, I went to Park MGM and I played some craps. And in the first session, uh, there was a pretty solid shooter. He got me up about 105 bucks. Then I hit the bathroom and came back in the table, proceeded to lose that 105 profit. Uh, and then... Immediately after that, uh, a lot of us, like, the, the dice went around the table, and all of us kept hitting a point or, cre or creating a point, and then we'd seven out immediately afterward. So the $200 I initially bought in went down to 60 And there goes my camera, of course. <coughs> oh, my God. Um, Give me one sec. I'll bring it back. Come on. Come on. There we go. Um, so so then there was a lady and her husband who were on the opposite end of the table. And you know, this entire stretch uh that I was at the at the, the craps table at Park MGM, it was just nothing but dude shooting. So it's like, you know what? Ladies are lucky. Let's see how she does. And so, you know, grabbed another, you know hundred bucks out of my wallet threw it on the table got some chips and this was at 4 16 p.m on saturday her final roll was at 5 40 p.m that girl went an hour and 24 minutes of just fucking killing it and uh, that's why I show this photo, because the fact that when I left the table uh, and yet yeah, it is a five hundred dollar chip, 
Uh, I left with what? 500 and see 25 plus 15 is 44, 542 bucks. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> so I, I think like total I lost on the trip, uh, was just like a little over a hundred dollars. And I mean, and that's over Wednesday night, Thursday, all day, Thursday, all day, Friday, and all day Saturday. And only went down a hundred bucks. That's not hundred, actually 120 bucks. It's not terrible for that long of a trip. Not to mention, the best part was the first two nights I was El Cortez, 100% comped, no resorts fees or anything, just straight $0 to stay there. Uh, and then I stayed at MGM Grand for the final night, and I think that set me back 20 bucks. So no complaints there. Uh, overall, pretty solid trip. And the, the worst part, of course, is I go back to Vegas, not this upcoming weekend, but the following weekend uh, for a buddy of mine's uh, 40th birthday. So we'll see. We'll see what kind of shenanigans I get myself into. Anyway, uh, Ben's picks to close the show out. I did accurately predict American League over National League, but let's be real. It's happened so many times over the last 20 years. Of course it was going to happen. Uh, Inter Milan took down Toronto FC. Magic lost to the Nets in overtime. And Orlando had like a solid lead throughout the majority of the game. Could not believe it. Uh, and then the Pirates did take down the Phillies on that Saturday. It was my idiot fault for betting on that Friday and not betting on that Saturday. So anyway, uh, my picks for this week, all baseball, because apparently that's all that's going on this week, which is bizarre as hell. Uh, there's no MLS until like the end of August. Uh, in, you know, Premier League and all the other soccer leagues will start up here in the next couple of weeks uh, just because the Olympics is going to be going on here in a sec. So all I have is baseball to predict. So uh, my lock of the week this week is going to be Sunday's games, uh, Sunday's game Royal versus the Cubs. Uh, my parlays are going to be tonight's game Mariners over the Angels uh, and then Thursday's Orioles over the Marlins. And then Saturday, I've got the Braves over the Mets. So. Let's see how those do. Uh, he a commenting, damn, I need your PTO balance, Ben. You got to remember. So here, here's the funny part. These trips that I just randomly did, because, I mean, I was only gone for like two days, you know, three days, whatever. Um, I'm also working at the same time. Like I'll, I'll take my computer with me, do all my meetings in the morning, whatever. So I'm not spending the entire day at the casino. Like I'll spend like the morning to early afternoon in my hotel, you know, get some breakfast, uh, do all my reports and stuff that I need to do. But then the other part of it is you got to remember over the last month and a half plus, And then like I, like I opened the show with, which is why I didn't do the show yesterday. I was at Great Mall yesterday rearranging their entire store. So I'm doing additional work on top of my normal work uh, and still helping train the new store manager there. And so it's just like, it. I'm ba I don't need to take PTO. I'm just taking days, my normal days off just because the fact that I'm working like every goddamn day. So um, that's why I've been so quiet on Twitter of late. It's just like, it's not that I you know, don't have anything to say or don't want to help people. It's just like, no, I'm at the store or I'm doing this other thing, working on this report. And so this is just a lot going on. So, so if I look more tired than I usually do, that's why, but also because I'm staying up to like three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning when I go to Vegas, Let, let's be honest about that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> gonna do flip the script later today um i gotta download college football 25 uh i've got a code i gotta put together and hopefully it works and so uh, i think austin and i might be jamming on that later tonight we still got to figure that out but uh recap tomorrow of course and uh because the the rushmore packs just continue to get released this week uh pretty much all the way through sunday my And uh, then, like I said, I go to Vegas again. Um, 
Elite Fitted says you should do a Vegas pop up next year during Summer League. I got a feeling we might. Got a feeling we might. I've uh, been pushing this for a bit. So, uh, also, there's a collection of hats that I've been talking about putting together. I need to send it to the Twitter design team. I just keep forgetting to do it just because I keep getting slammed with like all this other stuff to do. So, yeah. Um, you'll play me. Dude, I haven't even played it yet. Like, you're going to fucking smoke my ass. So, I can't even, like, get, let me get some games under my belt and get some practice. My God. Uh, but no, I will see you guys later tonight for uh flip the script and uh definitely see you guys tomorrow for recap. Uh, I got my other meetings that are starting up here in about 10 minutes. So glad I was able to wrap the show up and get it done. I hope that God I'm able to do this Monday. As long as I don't have to go to the store Monday morning, like I did yesterday, recap is back on Mondays, Monday morning specifically. We are gonna be good to go on that, I hope. Uh, but always a pleasure to chat with you guys uh shoot the shit about some sports uh but yeah back to hats uh for the last part of the day so i'll talk to you guys later peace oh sorry always end and recap with peace and, and flip a script i gotta gotta end the show the way i do it take it easy and if you don't take it sleazy <laughs>